and gentlemen. We all having a good time? Thank you very much for attending this seminar this morning. Um, we're very, very pleased to have a very good friend of the Kennel Club, Mark Abrahams, with us. You may know Mark. Mark is what we call a TV celebrity vet. He's also a practicing vet, and he represents the Kennel Club on veterinary matters in the media. Um, we're very pleased to have him here today to talk particularly about this tour because we all know that dogs have a, a, a big use in society today, but we need to remember some of the things, the ways that the dog have actually helped us um, or uh, helped us in the past century, but it's particularly important on this day of all days, um, Remembrance Sunday, to actually see how our canine friends have actually helped us during the war. So I'm going to hand you over to Mark, and Mark's going to talk about the role of dogs in war. So thank you, Mark. Thanks, Bill, for the lovely introduction, as always. Um, yeah, quite a special talk, I hope. Uh, quite a moving one as well when I've prepared it and uh, hopefully can share with you some of the things I've found along the way on such an important day in all of our lives today in England. Um, so first, the sponsor of this talk is uh, GWFnutrition.com, who are on stand 240, who do joint supplements for not just dogs, but also for horses. And they've kindly sponsored my lectures here at Discover Dogs. So with every breed of dog on show here at Discover Dogs, there's a certain breed that still isn't here. And that breed is called a summer dog. In the First World War, crossbreeds were referred to summer dogs because they were made up of some of this and some of that. And a lot of crossbreeds were recruited for war and still are. Um, not just from uh, rescue homes, but there was a time in the war where uh, a call went out and people actually volunteered their dogs to be used. So it's not just about the pedigrees, as uh, obviously Discover Dogs is promoting, it's about it's always fair thought for the crossbreeds. But there were pure breeds recruited to aid war in Britain as well, and they included Border Terriers, Airedales, Lurchers, uh, Old English Sheepdogs, Retrievers and Briards. Dogs have always played an important role in war where the danger was greatest, right on the front line. All the major countries have used dogs for a variety of purposes, often relying on them for tasks that were beyond human endeavour as they have so much to offer the military. Dogs offer speed, strength and stamina, intelligence and obedience, and we're all aware of that being dog lovers. During world wars, dogs have performed the following roles. They've guarded military bases, they've laid communication cables, they've pulled heavy machine guns, they've detected spies, they've carried first aid equipment, mail, ammunition, they've seeked out casualties, they've pulled sledges, and they've even been employed to catch rat, rat, uh, to catch rat, rats in the trenches. Even propaganda has featured dogs, such as the Churchill British Bulldog, and even some German Shepherds as well. Sadly, dogs suffered high casualty rates as their sensitivity to smell meant they were used to search for mines and tripwires, resulting in injury or death from explosions. Some would even rip their paws to shreds, scrabbling through the rubble of bombed out buildings looking for survivors or bodies. At the end of the First World War, the dog casualties from all countries were in the hundreds of thousands. Their major role as messenger dogs, first used by the British during World War I after much campaigning, by Lieutenant Colonel Richardson, and here he is with some of his Airedales. And this colonel pioneered messenger dogs and made them such an important force in the British Army. The advantage, of course, was that you could get a message to someone three times faster than the man could ever could. Also, being much, much lower to the ground, a dog was less of a target to the enemy. If conditions were particularly bad, for example, telephone wires were down, or it was too foggy or dark for pigeons, dogs were the only messages that got through. In order to carry the messages, the dogs wore collars specially made for this purpose. Some had small metal canisters attached, and others had space for messages behind flaps in the collar. These dogs carried out their duty nobly, passing rapidly through danger areas. This saved countless lives of not only the runners, but also individual units whose urgent messages they carried. Overall, the Colonel found Airedales and Collies to be the best messenger dogs. 
Sadly, in Russia, they treated their dogs slightly differently with the Soviet army bomb dogs. Totally starved, they were actually trained to find their food under a tank. The dogs quickly learned that being released from their pens meant to run out to where a tank was parked so they could eat. Once trained, the dogs were fitted with explosive charge, which you can see on the dogs back there, like a stick sticking up, and set loose into a field of oncoming German tanks. When the dog went underneath the tank, where there was less armour, the small wooden lever would be tripped, detonating the explosive and gutting the enemy vehicle. Incredibly, the dogs were so intelligent and could identify whether the tank was German or Soviet, so they actually ran back and, and blew up the tanks they practiced on, which was their own people. The PDSA Dickin Medal is quite a famous medal now, and it's recognized worldwide as the Animal's Victoria Cross, and is therefore the animal equivalent of the highest decoration for gallantry and bravery that can be bestowed on any member of the British and the Commonwealth forces. And the medal was introduced by Maria Dickin, who is also the founder of the PDSA, who felt that there should be an award to recognize the gallantry and devotion of animals serving with the armed forces or civil defense units during the Second World War. In total, the Dickin Medal has been awarded to the wartime exploits of only 27 dogs. Oh, and 32 pigeons, three horses, and a cat. But here are a few doggy uh, examples of past winners. This is Beauty. Beauty is a wire-haired terrier who would accompany her owner Bill on his searches of bombed houses, and it was one night in 1940 that Beauty joined in with the digging in the debris. The squad noticed Beauty's determination to dig and decided to help her. On digging some more, they discovered a cat trapped under the rubble. This was the beginning of Beauty's work. Beauty went on to become the first ever search and rescue dog, and in total rescued over 60 animals trapped in debris from destroyed buildings. She was presented with leather boots to protect her paws, which had become sore from efforts to reach victims of the air raids. Beauty became a pioneer for rescue work and was awarded her Dickin Medal on the 12th of January 1945. It is engraved with the following. For being the pioneer dog in locating buried air raid victims while serving with a PDSA rescue squad. Another very, very brave dog is Judy, the pointer, a Royal Navy mascot whose ship was bombed by Japanese aircraft and became beached on an uninhabited island. The crew, including Djibouti, were captured and imprisoned at a Japanese prisoner of war camp where Judy met leading aircraftman Frank Williams, who then became her master. Williams believed that many of the prisoners owed their lives to Judy. On being released from the camp, Williams was determined that Judy should return to England with him and she was smuggled on board a ship. After her six months in quarantine, she was registered as the only member of the returned British Prisoners of War Association and was also awarded her Dickin Medal. A bit more recently, in September, on September 11th, 2001, since the Second World War, thankfully, very few opportunities have arisen to be, for animals to be awarded the Dickin Medal. However, the harrowing events that took place at the World Trade Center on 2011 changed this. Three dogs were awarded the medal. One was given to Apollo, a search and rescue dog that was chosen from a ballot of the 400 dogs that searched for victims at Ground Zero. The second two medals were awarded to guide dogs, Salty and Roselle. Both of these dogs guided their owners down over 70 flights of stairs. This took one hour in total, and with the dog's help, both of their owners escaped unhurt. And quite incredible. In an account by Roselle's owner, Michael Hingson, he describes how they went down the stairs flight by flight and met the firemen that were going up on the 30th floor. Roselle stopped to say hello, and Michael strongly believes that this was the last conditional love those men ever received. Even more recently, the famous trio, the bomb-sniffing military black Labrador with a nose for explosives, has this year become the most recent recipient to be awarded the Dickin Medal for his role saving troops in Afghanistan by acting as a four-legged metal detector. Trio is credited with saving the lives of his human comrades on at least two occasions when he identified improvised explosive devices laid by Taliban forces to kill or maim NATO troops. On the 15th of August 2008, he found a daisy chain consisting of several bombs tied together that had been concealed by the side of a path. 
A month later, he saved a platoon from guaranteed casualties by finding a similar device. I'm sure most of you be aware of this memorial, just around the corner from the Kennel Club on Park Lane, the Animals in War Memorial. It's relatively new. It's quite a fascinating memorial. Has everyone actually been there? And they have a service on the 11th of November and also this morning for different animal organisations to commemorate the animals who died. On this side you've got all the animals that have actually died in wars. So you've got camels, you've got I think elephants, you've got um, there's, uh, there's uh, pigeons, there's mules, there's goats, even canaries and glowworms are represented. Does anybody know why glowworms are fought for us? To provide light in the trenches in the First World War. Quite incredible. Uh, as inscribed on the memorial which depicts all the animals that have been used by troops in wartime, as sadly it wasn't just the humans and dogs that were devastated in the Great War. Millions of animals, notably horses, donkeys, homing pigeons, camels, glowworms, were drafted into service and forfeited their lives for us. And if anyone's seen War Horse, it's amazing, isn't it? So everyone, it's a, it's a West End theatre production depicting uh, how horses were recruited and, off, and died in their thousands in, in, the, in the Great War. And uh, in, inscribed on the other side, just below the animals in war, it says, the memorial is dedicated to all the animals that served and died alongside British and Allied forces in wars and campaigns throughout time. They had no choice. Those of us, and that's most of us, who welcome dogs into our lives know how quickly they can become part of our family. For the dogs serving alongside servicemen and women fighting overseas, the bond of affection and respect is mutual and unique. They are working dogs, trained to search for explosives, and in doing that job, they are lifesavers and protectors. In conflict, the handler looks to the dog to do its duty. Time and time again, the dog reigns, remains steadfast companion and a friend for life. I hope all the remarkable stories you've heard this morning remind you of how animals have also served us, as they did yesterday, and will again tomorrow. Thank you.